Hey what's up guys, KSK Rao here. In this video I will show you how to install stable Ubuntu 2010 64-bit on Raspberry Pi 4. Unlike installing on SD card, I am going to install Ubuntu on SSD that enables Raspberry Pi 4 to boot directly from USB. Now this would significantly improve the overall user experience and performance of Raspberry Pi 4. Also, I am going to take the Raspberry Pi 4 to the peak level by overclocking both CPU and GPU to max frequencies to achieve a smooth user experience that indeed can be used for real personal computing. Now without further ado, let's get started. For the prerequisites of this video, you need a Raspberry Pi 4 with at least a 4 gigs of RAM is recommended a faster external SSD to boot Ubuntu from USB on Raspberry Pi 4, as well as a proper CPU cooler is needed for overclocking, as well as you need a higher watt power adapter that provides a sufficient juice. In my case, I'm using a 25 watt charger. And lastly, you need to have an updated firmware or EEPROM on Raspberry Pi 4 that supports a USB boot. If you don't know how to enable USB boot on Raspberry Pi 4, check the video in the description and watch that and come back over here. That being said, let's get into the step number one, downloading software for Raspberry Pi. Now go ahead, open your favorite browser and head over to the first URL that will take you to the official website of Ubuntu. Here choose Ubuntu 2010 64-bit. Now keep in mind this method will work only on Raspberry Pi 4 and Raspberry Pi 400. Go ahead choose the Ubuntu image for your Raspberry Pi 4 and download it. Now in my case I will be using a Raspberry Pi 4 for demonstration purposes. I'm gonna go ahead and download this image file. Now once it's done place it somewhere on your desktop for easier navigation. Next up, go to the second link from the description and download the Balina Etcher, a software that helps in making the bootable SSD for Raspberry Pi 4. Go ahead, download it for your computer. In my case, I'm using a Mac OS. I will choose a Mac version and install it. Step number two, flashing the software to SSD. Now, once it's done downloading all of the files, go ahead, connect your SSD to the computer through USB. In my case, I'm using the standard SSD with an external adapter. I'm going to go ahead and plug it into my device. Now open the Balina Etcher and choose the flash from file option and look for the Ubuntu image file and open it. Then go ahead, choose the target option and select your SSD from here. Once it's done, click on flash to start writing the Ubuntu on SSD. Now sit back and relax. The process will take some time depending on the speed of SSD. Step number three, overclocking Raspberry Pi 4. Now once it's done flashing the Ubuntu image to SSD, go ahead, eject the SSD and reconnect back to the computer. Now on my Mac, you can see the system boot folder is mounted automatically on the desktop. If you're using a Windows computer, you would see a boot folder mounted inside my computer. Go ahead, open the boot folder 
and look for the config.txt file and open it with any text editor. Now inside this file, we are going to add a few lines that will help in overclocking the Raspberry Pi 4. Now keep in mind, without a proper CPU cooler installed on Raspberry Pi 4, overclocking is not recommended. So this would potentially going to degrade the performance and Raspberry Pi 4 may not gonna boot or even it may generate a heat within the boat. So please use a proper CPU cooler. In my case, I'm using an aluminum cooling heatsink on Raspberry Pi 4 that indeed cools down the Raspberry Pi 4 even at higher clock speeds. If you wanna buy this heatsink for Raspberry Pi 4, I'm gonna leave a link in the description down below. Now go ahead and add these lines within the config.txt file to overclock the Raspberry Pi 4 CPU to 2.3 GHz and GPU to 750 MHz. Once it's done, press Ctrl plus S on Windows and Command plus S on Mac to save the changes. And that's it, now we have done overclocking the Raspberry Pi 4. It's time to boot Raspberry Pi into Ubuntu 2010 from SSD. Go ahead connect your Raspberry Pi 4 to monitor and connect the SSD through USB as well as connect to the power adapter and turn on the Raspberry Pi 4. As you can see we have done booting into Ubuntu screen Go ahead, connect to Wi-Fi, and follow on-screen instructions to finish installing Ubuntu. As you can see now how successfully configured Ubuntu and it's running like a buttery smooth. Let me go ahead and open my terminal and install the NeoFetch command to see the system information. If I run NeoFetch then under the CPU information you can see the CPU is overclocked to 2.3 GHz and it actually runs pretty smooth. Now compared to SD card, I would say this will boost a huge performance in terms of booting as well as read and write speeds. You may find the applications may launch faster than usual. Now multitasking will be pretty decent and the Raspberry Pi 4 may handle everything intact without any lag. As you can see, I'm running a lot of applications in the background and I haven't faced any performance issues so far. Now thanks to the CPU cooler, the CPU temperature will be around a 45 to 55 degrees even in extreme work conditions. Overall, I probably say now I can use my Raspberry Pi 4 as my computing device that helps in accomplishing the basic things just like the way I do on my laptop or PC. And that's it, this is how you properly install Ubuntu on Raspberry Pi 4 and overclocking to the maximum speeds. So that's the end of this video. If in case you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down there. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and consider clicking the bell icon to get notified whenever I post a new video. Thanks for watching this video. This has been KSK Ryle. I will catch you in my next video. Peace out.